Sacred Day students, welcome, it's class time. And I will be guiding you through CSEC Agricultural Science. This week, we're going to be looking at farm organizing and planning. Let's dig in. Now, today, our options are really wide. Now, the objectives today are one, to define farm planning and farm records, state the importances of farm records and farm planning in agriculture, discuss the common records used on a farm, and four, calculate total income, gross margin, total costs as it relates to agriculture farm management. Now, today we're gonna to tie our lesson around this big question. It says, Frenchy, a farmer from Wilson Valley, Trelawney, went to a bank to obtain a loan. He had increased demand for his produce and wanted to increase his production. He had no record, hence his loan application was denied. Explain fully the importances of record keeping and farm planning, discuss common types of records he may need and how to calculate his profit or maybe loss. So remember this question as we proceed. So let's dig in. What is farm planning? Farm planning is a decision-making process in the farm business. It involves organization and the management of the available resources at the beginning of the business. So farm planning encompasses a wide variety of resources. So how best we manage our land, our labor, and our capital, this speaks to how best we can actually obtain a profit at the end of our production season. Now, farm planning actually outlines the intentions of the farmer and his resources. What are his plans to utilize his available resources? And it allows the farmer to select the most profitable venture out of all the alternatives that he has. Now, there are importances that are attached to farm planning. Why do farm planning? One, it aids in maximizing the annual net income on the farm. Two, farmers can make optimum utilization of their available or sometimes scarce resources. Three, it enables the farmer to achieve their objectives in relation to the farm. So it actually guides the farmer to set a goal and revolve around that goal throughout production. Now, a farmer may ask himself or herself four questions when they're doing farm planning. First one is, what to plant, what to rear? Now this can tie into one of the factors that may influence this, maybe location. So, if you're living in an extremely cold environment, right? It wouldn't be ideal that the farm would want to plant peppers or rear pigs because of the climate. So this location may impact what the farmer selects to plant. Now, why choose that crop? Why choose that animal? Why enter into this service venture? This can look to maybe the availability of the, um, your demand source, where your highest demand point is. Next, he may ask himself, how much will it cost? So is it a venture that if I put money into, I may get a certain amount of um, profit or these are some of the factors? Does it entail me using a high amount of labor force or source? So these factors are very important. And lastly, how to achieve the desired production. So this goes back to him looking at himself, thinking and coming up with a target and set towards it. Now, farm planning has two main types. A farmer can go into short-term or long-term farm planning. In short-term farm planning, it normally looks at planning for a year or less of business. And this normally speaks to short production cycles. Examples are rearing poultry animals or rearing rabbits, or even so, looking at some quick crops like tomatoes and peppers. So short-term planning reeks quick profit, long-term profits. This looks on planning for periods that extend more than a year. 
So we look at long-term production cycles. So planting crops that takes more than a year to harvest, maybe a citrus crops or breadfruit, and it normally generates income, but it takes a long time. So if a farmer is going to venture into long-term, he may want to actually add some catch crop in between that can give him income over the period of time that he waits to harvest his long-term crops. And an example again would look at is dairy farming, which takes a period of time to actually reap a profit from. Now, trivia question at you. Long-term planning is used for the production of A, broilers, B, milk, C, peppers, or D, tomatoes. Long-term planning. Which venture would best speak on long-term planning? Let's see if you're correct. Right, milk, dairy production. So I guess you guys are on target, right? Great. Let's continue further. Let's look on farm records. A farm record is a document that is used to keep an account of the various activities, events, and materials that may be a part of the operation cycle. Now, these records may differ in regards to the sense of the accounts that you may need and in comparison to other aspects. So farm records are different from farm accounts in the sense that farm accounts deal with the financial aspect of all farm operations. So the records themselves help the farmer to keep track of everything that's happening on a farm. Because sometimes there are things that mean you can't remember everything. So the best thing to do is to document these information and then from there you can best see how you're making a profit or if there's a problem and you can fix it before it impacts your production greatly. So what are a few of the importances of records? One, they help the farmer to keep stock and manage every aspect of the farm properly. Two, they provide adequate information needed for proper planning and budgeting at every point of production. Three, it helps the farmer to ascertain the progress made in every aspect of the farm and overall performance of the farm. Now this can help the farmer to best pinpoint a few things that looks on number four importance, which are issues that may arise. They help the farmer to calculate their loss and seek how best they can mitigate them, sometimes very quick, as I said before, before it impacts his production greatly. Five, it enables the farmer to make important, informed decisions. So for example, if the farmer is going to do a cut in the amount of employees he has, he would draft one of his records to see how best he makes a profit with the, I mean, the, the most suitable amount of employees. So for example, he would do a staff, a staff cut by two persons because he needs to improve or step up on the amount of profit he's making for the year. So the records are important if a farmer wants to make some very important decisions throughout his production cycle. And six, it helps the farmer to monitor changes in price and the purchases and sales. Seven, it, rep it presents, represents, it presents, sorry, evidence of good management for the procurement of loans and grants and government assistances. So therefore, if a farmer wants to venture to get assistance, normally they would say, okay, then show me proof that you're a farmer or that you have been making some progress with production. And normally that will speak here on a man, show me a record, show me the proof that, you know, things are going for you and I can invest in your business. And last, it helps in calculating annual tax. And yes, I said tax, farmers do pay tax, right? Good. What are some of the characteristics of a good farm record? First, farm records should be easy to access. So if the farmer isn't available, fine. If it's a written document, because most farmers in the Caribbean normally practice writing their um, information while some persons maybe go to, you know, utilizing the technology. So it should be easy to access. If the farmer isn't available, you can just best, you know, go find and pull up the records. 
um, next it should be easy to do. So it shouldn't be so difficult that, I mean, only one person understands what's happening on your, in your record keeping system. So it should be easily done. Three, it should be simple, useful, and effective. So you must have the important detail that you should look at or what you're looking for. So if you're gonna look at recording the amount of animals, you need to have a few details there. So for example, maybe to whom the animal belongs. So it's parents. These are a few information that should be there if you're gonna generate a certain production record. Next one, we look at the purpose. Why are you generating this record? You should have a reason for doing your records. And three, it should, la, number five, it should be accurate and complete. It must be precise. You must have your calculations correct. You must be adding up your sales correctly to know how much money you're gonna spend, how much money you're gonna get into the business. So you must take your time to ensure that it is done accurately to reflect and look very accountable when you're going into the bank, you know? And last, we should have essential information. So the information there should be valid and to the point. Now, there are different types of records that are on a farm. Now, today we'll be looking at a few of them, a typical farm. So a typical farm would have an inventory record, production record, financial record, and labor and consumable at times. Now, the inventory record speaks volume on what the farmer would have in his possession based on his items. And the production looks on livestock and crop records, while the financial record speaks on the inflow and outflow of money from the business. So it looks on the income and the expenses of the farm business. So we are going to look on the first record, which is inventory record. Inventory record counts and assigns value to the resources on the farm at the beginning of an accounting period. Accounting period normally speaks to a full year. So one year would, would be what we consider an accounting period. Now, you have small farms and we have large farms. So on a small farm, we have normally, farmers would normally only have maybe just one inventory record to factor all the elements on his farm. While on a large farm, normally have multiple inventory records. So we're looking on the different types of farm records. So we have inventory, production, financial, and labor record to highlight today. So let's continue. Now, inventory record. Inventory record counts and assigns value to resources on a farm at the beginning of an accounting period. As I said prior, an accounting period normally speaks to a year of production or one year. Now, inventory records can be are utilized on different farms. On small farms, they normally have one inventory because a small farm normally have few um, items to take into consideration. So one inventory would suffice the entire unit. Now, on a large farm, we look on multiple inventory records. So, for example, you would have an inventory that factors the different buildings on the farm. Now, this... When they have multiple records, multiple inventory records, what happens is that they can actually every year see what's happening over time because they're utilizing the same record so they can reflect on past information. Now, what are some of the importance of having an inventory record on your farm? One, it determines the net worth of your business and the network network speaks to <laughs> assets and your liabilities next it computes non-cash expenses such as depreciation items over time lose value like a motor vehicle so for example you have a machete it was bought two years ago over a period of time what happens is that the machete loses value based on use and don't get me wrong sometimes some items they're not even used and the value is lost over time. Now, a few examples of um, inventories. We have machineries here. So an example, if anybody can pinpoint, we have maybe a rotavator here, plow, 
We have examples of buildings. So we have farmhouse, barn, pigsty, greenhouse. These are examples of buildings that we take into consideration when you're doing your inventory on buildings. Then we look at tools and equipments. Here we have machetes, wheelbarrows, rakes, shovels, um, spade, hammers. These are all things that we would consider as a, a part of our inventory. Here is an example of an inventory record. Before we said an inventory should have correct information or important information. So an inventory here, we're looking at the serial number, serial number, description, date purchased, cost, repairs, current worth, and the sale price. So let's say we're gonna address each implement based on the number. So we're gonna say we're gonna assign a number. So for example, M, let's say it signifies machete, machete 24. It's new, that's a description. When was it bought? It was bought December 15, 2020. It was bought for $1,200. No repairs because the implement is new. Then we look at the worth of it. It's worth $1,200 and the sale price because it's new would have been sold for the price we bought it for. Let's look at the first machete we bought, M01. The description, it has a broken handle. It was bought two years ago, March 2018. The cost then was for $1,000. Handles need to be replaced and it has been replaced temporarily. The current cost, remember we said, you know, that some items lose value over time. So currently after two years, the cost for the machete is around $600. And if I were to sell the item back, I would say, you know what, give me $400 and go. So over time, item lose value and an inventory record can assist in pinpointing how much items you have on the farm, the state of the items, and if you need to replace anything on the farm. And another example here is an inventory record, but this one in the description area, it states the name of the actual implement. So let's look at here, we have a weed walker. How many do you have? We have two. At the beginning of the accounting period, the cost for it was 4,800 for both. The value at the end is $4,000. So over the accounting period, the item lost value, $800, right? And the comments or the remarks would be in good condition. So by looking at your record here, you can say, here, one man, let's look what's happening here and move forward to make a decision. Next, we have our production record. A production record is used to report the, the performance of a crop or livestock enterprise. Now, for example, we have crop records. Crop records would include soil conditions, cropping patterns, I mean, looking at the building location. These are a few things that you can draft from a crop record. Livestock record, you can look at the breeding cycle of the animal, um, the mortality rate of the animal, how do they perform, how do they react to the feed, are they converting their food properly. These are a few things you can draft from the production record. Also, labor records sometimes they be linked to finding details on the animals in the production record. So for example, it may look on, I mean, how many work hours were actually placed into the production cycle. But pulling away from such, let's look at a sample of a production record. Now, here we have a sample of a production record. One, it speaks on what crop we are actually planting, the variety, how many was planted, when was it planted, when did we harvest. It looks at land preparation, the types, what did we use. And the remarks, where we have land preparation in the remarks section or column, we have hired contract labor. So here, you know, here when a, um, employment was actually stuck to the production cycle. So we can now draft our labor record to see, you know, a breakdown of what the labor force looked like for the production of lettuce. Now the production record speaks on breaking down what was done throughout production of the crop. Now, a few importances of production record is one, it makes productivity and it gives you a projection to future plans. So therefore, 
based on the level of production, you can increase, you may decrease, you can make future plans based on how your production rate is going. And as I say again, guys, you can actually pinpoint problems when you have a record and fix them before they impact the business negatively. Two, a production record identifies the strength and the weakness of your farm, which ties into pinpointing your areas of weaknesses and fixing them. Also, when you're going to apply for any grant or to any funding agency, they would ask for records. And one important record they're going to ask for is your production record. Next, we look at our labor record. No, labor record records the name of the worker, payroll number, the days they worked, how much did you pay them, if they worked overtime. It shows casual or permanent laborers. So it expounds on your labor force to see how you are paying your customers, your um, employees. I mean, sometimes you may be not paying them right or you know, you're overpaying and you can see these problems when you draft your labor record. So a sample of what a labor record may look like is here. We have the employee's name, maybe up top or the name of your business. Then we look at the broken down section where we have the name of the persons that may be inserted here. What role do they play on the farm? So for example, you may have, um, let's say Michael Cox would have been the name of the employee and he is my packer, right? I may have Rona Whiteley. She may be my farm hand. Now over time, it looks on how much do I pay? Did she work overtime? Did she work her regular hours? How did I pay? Did I pay them weekly, monthly, hourly? And everything is actually summarized in the section to the right. Next, we are going to break down our financial records. Now, financial records takes into consideration the income and the expenditure or expenses on the farm. So income speaks to the inflow of money on your farm and expenses will speak to, will speak to how the cash leaves your farm. <laughs> so what do they include? Financial record, we are gonna look at the profit and loss account, assets, liabilities, net worth statement, or sometimes it can be called balance sheet. Fixed and variable costs. First one, fixed costs is associated with the input that does not change based on the level of production. Variable costs, it's associated with the inputs that changes based on the level of production. So let's say you are going to rear, I mean, 100 chicks, 100 poultry animals, right? and you realize that it makes a profit. So I'm gonna increase my level of production. I'm going to increase the amount of birds. Your fixed cost, so for example, would increasing the poultry animal actually increase the building that you have? Would it increase the tax that you have to pay? Would it increase your insurance? These things would not directly be impacted if you increase your production. So any input that actually does not change based on how you, your production is happening, that would be considered a fixed cost, right? But if you're going to increase the production or decrease the production of poultry animals, it would impact things like what? Feed, it would impact labor force, it would impact the chemicals that you have to buy for the animals. These are things that we would consider a variable cost. Once increasing or decreasing your production impacts it, it will be considered variable. Let's look at trivia here. This trivia question states, to which group does the following term belong? The terms belong. So first, we have land. Would land be variable or fixed? Feed, repairs, insurance, machinery, medication. Let's see if you guys are correct. Okay, so land, insurance, and machinery would have been fixed because, you know, if you're going to increase your production or decrease your production, it would not affect the fact that you have a tractor on the farm. That wouldn't impact it. 
if I'm going to increase my production, I have to buy more feed. I'd have to maybe repair more, repair my tractor because my tractor would now have to be working more. I would have to buy more medication for my animals. So these are impacted by the various factors. Let's look further on assets and liabilities. What are assets? Assets are items owned by the farm business that have value. They include the items that the farm uses to produce products that they sell. Liabilities are debts owed to others, including commercial lenders, vendors, and private individuals. So assets are items that are owned by the business, whilst liabilities are items that owe, they are owed. Understand? So for example, assets would have been things that impact and they must have some level of value that can add in some way to your production cycle. While liabilities, it does impact your production cycle, but however, it's normally in a negative way because you have to actually, by chance, pay out most of the times. Now your network, which I spoke of earlier, speaks on the total assets that you have and you're going to then minus the total liabilities, what you have left thereafter is called your net worth. So after paying out all the things that you owe or cover all your business, whatever you have left would have been considered your net worth. Let's look at a trivia question again to see if you're following. To which group does the following terms belong? We're looking at assets and liabilities. Three terms. We are looking at rent, livestock, and mortgage. To which group do they belong? Assets or liabilities? Great. And we'll have some bright sparks out there, right? So assets would have been the livestock. The farmer owns it, right? What he doesn't own, he owes. So he may owe rent and mortgage. So those will be considered liabilities. Now, Profit and loss account. A profit and loss account shows a farm's income and expenses over a particular period of time. And this period usually speaks to a bond. So when you draft your profit and loss account, it's actually breaking down what's happening normally over a month cycle, right? Now, an income statement now speaks on more of a summary. So an income statement is a summary of the income and the expenses that occurs over a specific period. And we go back to the term again, an accounting period. And an accounting period is usually a full calendar's year, right? So income statement would speak on a broader summary in comparison to the profit and loss account. Here is an example of the profit and loss account. Now we have receipts and expenses. On your left side, we have the income. And income, as we said before, looks on the inflow of cash in the business or exchange services. We look on the expense on the right-hand side, which speaks to the outflow of cash, things that the farmer would have to maybe purchase to assist in his production, like your labor, he has to pay his laborers, right? seedlings and such. So these are examples of how a profit, what a profit and loss account may look like on a farm. So at the end of the month, you may have your total. So you would see how much money was spent and how much money was made. And at this point, the farmer can make a change. He can say, here on a money, you know, I'm spending too much money on my labor. So I may cut few other persons or, you know, one of the persons. And he can make adjustments prior to or before the end of his accounting period. We look at a balance sheet. What is a balance sheet? In farming, a balance sheet shows the value of assets left for the farmer after all claims and liabilities have been paid. So after he has cleared up all his expenses, anybody he owes, what is left is called, as I said before, is net worth. And you'll see this very regularly. So we have here, we have assets and liabilities all his assets, and you can see here, these are familiar terms. 
in agriculture. So they normally use the same terms over a period of time. So you may have land, building, machinery, crop. These are examples of assets that you may see quite often. And liabilities are wages, rent, mortgage, and creditors. Just look out for the terms that you can maybe ease when you are doing your balance sheet. So the assets here, so it's a very big figure. So this is $305,000. Liabilities are $304,200. Now, how do we calculate our income? The income, we use three facts. One, total fixed costs, total variable costs, and total income, or what we may sometimes say, growth income. Production record. So let's go. The production record here expounds on the fixed input, fixed costs, and variable costs, and income. So on this side, we have all our fixed costs. On our fixed costs, we speak on land, rental, depreciation, and again, students, these terms are normally repeated when they are looking on, different, on fixed costs. Variable costs, we have uh, medication, labor, electricity. These are all, again, topics that may be, terms that may be repeated. Your net income, how do we calculate your net income? Your net income speaks on the total costs, which is the total variable plus the total fixed cost. Now, the net income is calculated by deducting the total cost from the total income. Now, this is an, the extract below shows the total fixed cost, the total variable, and the income. How would I generate my income? I would first deduct if add, sorry, the total variable and the fixed cost, which is $2,500 plus $35,500, and I would get $38,000. Then what I would do is now deduct my total cost from my total income, and what I get would now be my net income, which is $52,000. So just pay attention to the example there. Next, we have our gross margin. How do we calculate our gross margin? We look on deducting the variable costs from the total income to calculate our gross margin. And gross margin is very important because it shows the farmer, you know, how the variables are impacting its production over time. And if you get a high gross margin, that means you're well on your way to profit. So gross margin is deducting the variable costs from the total income. Based on our extract there, we would deduct 35,000 from the 90,000 and what we get would have been our gross margin. Trivia question thrown at you guys. Let's see if you're moving fast as I am. Which of the following records is designed to give information on the yields on the farm? We look at production, inventory, financial and labor. The answer is production record. Great. Now, remember our question from the beginning that we threw out? Now, are you now better able to answer the question based on what we did today? Right, so you are asked to explain and discuss information in regards to what was said. So today we looked at farm planning. We also looked at the importance of planning, types of planning, different records, some of the characteristics of record keeping, the types of records on a farm. We actually looked on the produce. We looked at liabilities, what was owned, what's owed. We looked at the fixed costs. We looked at variable costs, uh, profit and loss accounts um, from the farm. And we looked how to calculate the income and gross margin. Now, as a farmer, guys, always remember that you have to dig deep into the information. So today is just a tidbit to tell you that once you're in agriculture, just like any other business, you have to plan, plan, and keep planning.